little day for kids is back to the 90s, so all of us 90 kids that enjoyed all of that, that stuff, uh, there, there's going to be lots of things going on, but let me, let me encourage you, there is a dump booth that starts at noon. Forget, don't listen to anything that anybody's saying that it starts at 1130, because it doesn't. It starts at noon with Mr. Hicks, not 1130 with me. So uh, save your money, save it for the people that really matter in town, and uh, you really want to dunk. And uh, I laughed with them because they asked me if I'd be interested in sitting in the dump tank. And I said, you mean people don't like me that much that they want to... Um, that they want to like try to pay to drown me and they're like yes pretty much that's it so uh anyway but i encourage you to go it's going to be fun um and it'll be a a great day so well we're going to kick off a new series I, i'm not going to lie i've been trying to preach this series for 15 years i heard a, i heard a, a friend preach something similar uh to it one time back in, when i was a youth starting as a youth pastor i thought that is the coolest series I've ever heard of. It was back to school, and he and he took different subjects, and I never listened. I didn't listen to any of his messages because I was like, I don't want to copy them. But like the concept is cool, and so we're going to start a new new series. And if you weren't here, uh, you know, I told you a while ago, or you know, if you just logged on on Facebook, uh, we're representing Scott City High School and uh, Pleasant Hill High School. And uh, I, I made the joke, I'm even thin enough to wear my class ring. If you just logged in on Facebook, you get to see that the voice. I've never seen anything like that. So, um, and and of course, we are in the middle of Bernie country, and and Bryce has a Letterman jacket. Taylor has a Letterman jacket. They just don't use them here. So, uh, we had to bring what we had and uh, and represent in the house. So, um, even wore my school colors, blue, blue and gold. So, and I even wore my Chuck Taylors this morning because back when I was in high school, and Travis could probably relate. Some of you can relate. These were the shoes we wore. <laughs> uh, back in the day was, well, I think Travis was born with Crocs on, so that's not a big deal, but and, I mean, when he has to wear orange Crocs to match the Jeep, we know he's devoted. So anyway, we're going to start back to school, uh, a series this month, and, uh, and, and, uh, and part of it is our whole month is tied into our, our kids um, and, and our teachers. Um, next Saturday, I'm so excited to announce at, at the community thing, it will start off at 11 o'clock with prayer. And uh, we're going to pray over our administration as a community, our administration, our teachers, our students, our buildings, everything. And so I'm excited that our community is going to have a chance uh, once again to pray over the school year that we don't have any issues. We don't have any you know, school shootings. We don't have any deaths uh, that, that God will just be generous to our school. But today, we're going to kick off, and if you want to turn to 2 Peter, we'll get to it in just a minute. But I want to ask a question to kind of kick off this series and, and kick off today, because today we're going to talk about my favorite subject in school. My favorite subject that I loved going to every day, and you're going to laugh at me when I tell you what it was. No, it was not home ec. No, it was not PE. I loved math. Math was my subject. I mean, math was like awesome. So here's the thought I want to I want to ask today to let you know where we're going, and, and give you something to be thinking about as we walk through this this morning. And the thought is this: Does what you're doing add up to equal God's obedience? If you put everything you're doing and add it all together, does it equal being obedient to God? Now, my I said my, my favorite teacher or subject was math. Partly because I like numbers. I think that's where Bryce gets it from. But partly, and, and, and this is meant as the purest way possible, part of it was because I loved the math teacher. Not physically, literally loved, but I loved her style of teaching. She made it, was one of those teachers, you might have a teacher that, that they made school fun. Like, you enjoyed going to their class. It wasn't like, oh my gosh. Like I had a teacher, I literally taught myself how to sleep with my eyes open. Because, bless his heart, this is how he talked the entire 50 minutes. He never raised his voice. He never lowered his voice. He kept it in the same line. Of and how many of it was, and it was right after lunch. So it's like you're sitting there and it's like, Ugh. and so I taught myself how to sleep with my eyes open. And but I could say, but but still be conscious enough that if he called on me, I knew where we were. I mean, I got some good naps out of that class. But she made it so fun. Miss Bradshaw, she made math so much fun. I even took calculus. In high school. Why? I have no earthly idea to this day. I still don't know how to do calculus, but I took a year of calculus. Because how many also realize there's some, some subjects you sit in class and you've had this thought 
Am I ever going to really use this in the real world? Why do we have to learn this? What's the point? This is a waste of time. Why? I, I was thinking in high school because it was mandatory when I was in high school. You had to take two years of Spanish. You had to. You had to. I'm like, when am I ever going to use Spanish? Now, now let's all of us, most of us, except for a several couple in this room, go back to where it wasn't the world we live in today. Where you know. It, but now I'm like, why did I not pay attention? Because, you know, it, it would be nice to be fluent in Spanish because then I could talk to somebody on the phone and not have to worry about it. But then one day I'm sitting there as a youth pastor and we decide to remodel our youth room. Full remodel. Walls, staging, chair ceiling, all of this stuff. And I walk into this project and I'm like, I don't even know where to start. And so I called a friend and I said, hey, I said, we're remodeling our youth room. Where do I begin? You've done this. Where he goes, what's the square footage of your room? I mean, at that moment, this was before Google. So I didn't have Google to go, how do you, I was like, I don't know. He goes, okay, since you're not very bright, here's what you do. Go in and measure the room, length by width by width, and then you get the square footage. Then you'll know what you can deal with. And I'm thinking, why did I not pay attention to the geometry and all of this stuff? And then and then God has this sense of humor where he calls you into to a, a profession where public speaking is one of the key components of what you do every day. And you take your first speech class in college and realize, I'm not very good in English. Maybe I should have paid attention in an English class and learned what a pronoun and a noun and an adjective and an adverb and a, and a, and a, and a dangling participle and all, well, whatever those words are that Rachel could use and I would be like, mm, right, good. Right. But in that moment, you're like, oh, no, why did I not pay attention? But how many of you also realize this morning, the Bible talks about everything. Any, anybody have a, a relative and you can raise your hand if you want to, or just don't point at your spouse. A relative or somebody you know that knows a little bit about everything, thanks to Google. Okay, Taylor, I can believe that. They know everything. And, 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 and the Bible even teaches us about subjects that are taught in school. And that's where the next couple of weeks we're going to look at math and English. And, 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 and yes, we're throwing in a week on physical education. But today I wanted to start with math. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. It says this, and it should be on the screen there with me. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness. Sorry, Taylor, you've got to love you, brother. Brothers. And a brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, math has always puzzled me. Anybody ever get confused with math? I mean, you, you, okay, I'm going, okay, so this is just for me. Keep going. You have all these, these formulas and equations that not always make sense, but in the end, if you look in the back of the book and you're smart and you cheat, uh, I mean, you, you study hard and you, you work, learn, you realize you get the answer you say, but it doesn't always make sense. Then, by the time you think you have math figured out, they invent this new two words that I think are from the straight pit of, of Hades. And it's called Common Core. Anybody ever tried to help, anybody help anybody with Common Core math? No longer does 1 plus 1 equals 2. 1 plus 1 could be 4. 1 plus 1 could be 1. 1 plus 1 could be 0. And they've totally thrown a wrench into all of this because now you have to add up blocks and, and, and columns and rows and dissect and all that stuff. No, it is no longer addition and subtraction. It's adding and taking away. I'm like, why can't we just make this easy? Because Paul comes home and he's like, Dad, can you help me with my math homework? I'm like, no, call your teacher. That's why they have a degree. It's because they know what they're doing. I don't because I'm going to tell you one plus one equals two no matter how many ways you dissect it. But Peter gives us this math formula and he says this, add to your faith virtue, virtue knowledge, knowledge self-control, self-control perseverance, 
Perseverance, godliness. Godliness, brotherly kindness. And brotherly kindness equals love. And you're adding godly attributes to your life. And then in, the, in verse number 8, it gives you the, the what this equals. It says, for if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying, if you add these things to your life, this is what the result will be. How many know if you go to the gym every day and you and you lift weights and each week you you add a little bit more weight, the result is, is you get to be a little bit stronger. You get to look a little bit buffer. You're not in you walk around and you're like the gym is that way. You know, anybody ever be okay. Nathan and Kayla's the only ones that can do that. So we can go on. But here is where we we struggle sometimes. When you're doing your math homework, or you're trying to help your kids with the formula, it doesn't make sense. Some of the greatest fights in our, our, our house have been working math worksheets. I'm not kidding. We're not the perfect family. I, Kristen and I were taught the right way to do math, and Cole and Bryce are being taught the common core math, which is of the devil. Okay, I'll just say it. There it is. It is what it is. I said it. Yes, I said it. And we're like, this is the answer. And they're like, but that's not, that's, that, that, that's not, that's not right. I'm like, we're calling the teacher. We're like, could you just give us the answer so and we'll figure out how we, how we get there? And they're like, here's the answer. I'm like, that's what I got. And Cole's like, but that's not the way you do it, Dad. You got to do it this way. You got to, you got to get, he brings out this separate sheet of paper. He's like, you got to write all these columns down and then add the blocks. And then you take away this and take away that. And I'm like, what just happened? Like, what? And then the parents are like, Cole's struggling in math. I'm like, no kidding, he's struggling. I have a degree. I'm struggling in math. I'm like, I feel like I'm failing. They go like, it's my fault. I'm helping him. And, and finally, the teacher was like, okay, we'll just work with him. Don't help. Don't help anymore. No, no, no. Just let him go. We'll figure it out. It works for me. But here's where we struggle is, is how many are like me? If something doesn't make sense, it aggravates you. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, like all lay out perfectly, like you can see where this is going to happen. Anybody else get frustrated? Anybody at home get frustrated? Because you're like, that didn't make sense. I don't know how that worked out. It didn't make. It wasn't supposed to happen like that, but it did. I got the answer I was supposed to, but I don't know. And what happens is, is when something in our life happens that doesn't make sense, who's the person we blame? And don't say your spouse. We blame God. God, you're just not making sense. Anybody ever? Just humor me this morning. Anybody ever uttered those words to God? You don't make sense right now. This doesn't make sense. I don't understand why this is happening. I don't understand why I I, 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 I don't understand. Lord, I don't understand why all I want is for my lawnmower to work right. That's all I want, Lord. It doesn't make sense. I prayed over the thing. I, I tried to, to, to MacGyver the wheel back on the thing. I finally got the belts to work where it doesn't blow up. But now the wheels won't stay on. Lord, Lord it doesn't make sense. What, am I, what have I done to you that you can't let me enjoy my ride lawnmower? And then I talked to a friend this morning that her daughter has been, has been diagnosed with, you know, untreatable cancer. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. A lawnmower is not a big deal. This is a big deal. Lord, this is, I'm sorry. It, it, but it frustrates us. But I don't think, I don't believe God gets offended in our frustrations. I told my friend, I said this morning, I said, as frustrated as you are and as angry as you are, you're talking, you're still talking to God. And that's more, that's important. It may be out of anger, but he's not offended by that. He's saying, wow. At least we're communicating. At least we're talking. You're telling me how you feel. But we get this frustration with God because it doesn't make sense. Because we want to be obedient. How many want to be live to be disobedient to God? Nobody. Well, there's some people, but not. We'll, we'll leave them over here from time to time. We want to be people that that, that honor God. We want to be people that we trust in our faith. I, 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 the last few weeks, we've prayed over special needs, and and um, 
this week, I, I told you all last week, I had to go to the a surgeon this week and was uh, not knowing what was going to expect, what to expect him to say. And my faith took a roller coaster ride because he walks in, introduces himself to me, says, let me show you something. And he puts the x-ray of my knees up on the board. And he said, has anybody told you you have a bone tumor? Well, I don't know how you feel, but when you hear the words tumor and your body, it kind of causes a little bit of havoc. And he sensed that because I'm almost, my eyes, Kristen said, your eyes were bugged out. You look like they, you know, you could already tell you were ready to cry. And I was losing it. And he looked at me and he goes, whoa, 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 but wait. This is non-cancerous. This isn't a big deal. He goes, more people have this than don't. It's like, not a big deal. He goes, everything in your knee can be fixed. And he goes, and we probably can do it without surgery. I'm like, hallelujah. I'm like, that's my faith in work. Saying, okay, you give me the right doctor that operates on all of CMO's athletes. And, and, and he knows what he's doing. He walked in and said, here's what we're going to do. This is the plan. This is what's going to happen. We're good. Don't worry. Don't sweat this. It's all going to be okay. And I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, because how many of us have walked in, and I love doctors. I love what they do. That they're smart. But they walk in like, we don't know what to do. We're just going to see what happens. And here, take this pill, and, and we'll see. And then like 10 years later, you're like, I'm just going to just quit. This is not going to make it. But, but as people of faith, putting our faith, we, that's the people we want to be. But we find ourselves in all that going, God, it doesn't add up correctly. This doesn't, I, I, I'm going to church. I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. I'm even giving. I'm serving. I'm helping. But every time I help, something bad happens. I can tell you three times. And I, my riding lawnmower has just become my, the joke of my family. Three times I've used my lawnmower to mow somebody else's yard. Try to be nice. Not, not, they don't even ask me. I just was like, I'm just going to be nice and bless them. Three times my lawnmower broke down while mowing somebody else's yard. It never breaks down when I'm mowing mine. But when I try to help someone, I'm like, Lord, this doesn't make sense. I'm trying to be a servant. I'm trying to, like, you know, make the church look good. You know, we mow first silly mow your yard, and then my mower breaks down. But we find ourselves doing things, and then, and then it doesn't add up, and, and, and then we get confused. How many have read the Bible where it says, turn the other cheek? And you're like, you want me to do what? But Lord, they punched me first. It's called self-defense. Don't you know our constitutional rights? If somebody hits me, hit back. God says, you can. After you turned it 70 times 7, 490 times, then maybe you can retaliate. We'll talk after that. You want me to, to pray for my enemies? Why would I pray blessing over somebody that doesn't like me? Because it'll rub them the wrong way. It, you could torment them to the day that Jesus comes back. And it just make things worse. But when they know you're praying for them, how many know that does, they can't refute that? You, you want me to, to give what I may not have just for you to give it back to me? Lord, what are you doing? God, I asked God this one day, are you on the Common Core math board? Because this is about what it feels like. The same confusion. And the only answer that I have is that God doesn't need us to understand. He just needs us to obey. Pastor Choco De Jesus is our national treasurer for the Assemblies of God, and he made a statement. He said, he said, understanding can wait. Obedience can. Bryce, do you have that slide? There it is. Oh, understanding can wait. Obedience can't. Because you see, it may not add up to us, but how many know God has a plan? God, God has a purpose. I looked up stories in the Bible that don't make sense to me, but it did to God. It didn't add up to me when, when how 12 people could change the world as they knew it just by simply going around talking to people. Anybody ever change somebody's life just by going and talking to them? Just having a conversation, normal conversation? It's probably happened and you didn't even realize. Control of death, hell, and the grave and rose on the third day. Here's one that really doesn't make sense. It's found in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. 
When it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What? We deserve death for our sins. But Jesus says, I'm going to give you eternal life. It's a free gift. How many like free gifts? Come on now. Come on. I mean, free. I mean, that's like the greatest word ever. Free. And here's one that really doesn't make sense. John chapter 14, verse 3 says this. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself. That where I am, you may also be. Here's the only sense I can make of these things. One, God has a plan. He knows what he's doing. It says, Jeremiah, for I know the plans I have for you. So we know that God has a plan. But here's the thing. We also have to understand God knows what he's doing. Sometimes, sometimes, everybody say sometimes, you have to hit rock bottom to see what God is doing. You have to get to the low parts to see what God. Now, God will bring you back up. He's not going to keep, he's not going to, you're not going to hit rock bottom and you stay there. God says, I'll bring you back. I'm bringing you back up. I'm showing you the plan. But you have to trust me to, to know what I'm doing. Anybody ever try to teach somebody something and you're like, this isn't going to make sense right now. But when it, when it clicks, you'll understand, I know what I'm doing. There's a process. There's a, there's a reason we do things in this order. So there's a plan. God knows what he's doing. But it also boils down to God just wants us to trust. Trust him. That he's, you're his kid. Trust me, I'm not going to let you, you know, let you, let you get hurt. Physically, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm, 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 I'm not gonna let all these bad things happen and not be there with you. It's like when you when you're an adult and you have a a, a, a child that is trying to learn to swim. How many have done this where they stood on the side of the pool and they're like, "Just jump in, trust me. I'll catch you. I won't let you go under." And then if you're like my dad, when I jumped in, he took a step back and I went under and he pulled me right back up. He's like, "See, it didn't hurt you to go underwater." I'm like, "Dad, you, you know, you're spitting and squirming." And, and all of this, God said, just trust me. I formed you. I breathed life into you. I gave you a great spouse, gave you great kids. I've not done all of this now to make your life a living nightmare. I'm doing it because trust me, I've got a plan. I begin to wonder about that plan. You know, when you, you get into your early 20s and you still can't keep a girlfriend, and you still, you know, like, I'm better be in the ministry. And, and I don't know if you ever noticed this, but there's this unwritten rule in the ministry that if you're not married, you're not a pastor. You know, you can't be a good pastor without a wife. And she needs to play the piano and sing and be beautiful and, and all of that. And luckily, I got two of the three. She can't play the piano, but she's beautiful and can sing. You know, and, and so, you know, I'm getting like 21, 22, 23. And I'm like, I still can't find a girlfriend. And then I meet her. But God, you had a plan. There's a reason all these other girls didn't work out. It's because they weren't her. And now she's mine. And forever will be mine. Because God, I had to trust that God had a plan. So back to the question that I asked earlier. Is what you're doing add up to godly obedience? Because like anything else, the Bible gives us Add this, add virtue, add love and, and, and brotherly kindness and perseverance and virtue and knowledge. Add all of these things and, and you will be okay. But how many know, with any like any good parent, when you give a list of things, this is what we want you to do, and your kids don't do it, there has to be some sort of punishment, right? There has to be some sort of discipline. Because without the discipline, you don't learn. Without the punishment, you don't remember the next time, you know, of, okay, well, last time I did this, I got, got spanked back 
since we're going old school, back to school, we can talk about the good old days when you could spank your kid, and or, or how many of us went through the, I mean, spankings, and nobody turned your parents into DFS, they just said that's been, that was good parenting. You know, I, I got spanked quite a bit, as you can imagine, and, and, and I never thought about calling DFS on my parents because my dad would have beat me for that. I mean, would have spanked me for that too. And, and, and but, but it, it adds up. And so in the Bible, it gives us some things. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27 says this, the fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. Now that doesn't mean Everybody that dies early is wicked, okay? I don't want to confuse and people like, well, everybody that dies before their time, you know, I've never known anybody that died before their time, but dies too early, this must be wicked. No, that, this is a different thing. And then look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19. It says, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, which is the Bible, if anyone adds to them, God will add to them the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, the, uh, the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and the holy city, which are described in this book. Now, let me give you Joey's translation of what God is telling us in this passage. And it's real simple. God's saying, if I wrote it in the book and call it sin, it's sin. If I wrote it in the book and told you you need to do this, you need to do this. If I wrote it in, in my book and said, don't do this or you're going you're gonna to have consequences, there's going to be consequences. I believe, and because I am one, I will, I, will, I will say this with confidence. I believe there are a lot of pastors that will have to give an account for what they've preached from this Bible. Because it was not, and I've heard people say things that were not, did not line up with what scripture says. And it's run people from the church and they will have to give an account when they stand before God of what they say. That's why I always try to, uh, when I preach, if I, if I make something that's an opinion, I want to be able to back it up with scripture. I want to be able to say, this is what God is saying. This is what God means. And so if God calls it sin, it's sin. If the Bible calls it good, then it's good. Because look, I know we live in a, a, a dangerous time right now, but flip all the way back to Genesis. And it says when God finished creation, he looked at it and was pleased and said, it is good. And he, then he looked at Adam and said, it's good for man to have a wife. And that's why he created man and woman to be married. Okay? So if the Bible gives us things to add to our lives, then why wouldn't we add them if they're not already there? I've always been told the day you stop learning is the state is the day you begin to die. I make it a goal to be uh, made it a goal of mine to be a lifelong learner, to always be reading, always be studying, trying to learn something new. Because I come back to the question: Is what I am doing adding up to godly obedience? I can ask you that question, but I've had to ask myself that question about a hundred times this week. Is what I'm doing adding up to godly obedience? Am I being obedient to what God says? Does it add up? Because some people, it, 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 we, all, and we probably all immediately think of somebody. What they say doesn't add up to what they do. And as I was sitting there this week, I thought, you know, last week we, we, we talked about road to recovery is having compassion on people in our community and having compassion on when we see someone struggling. And then, you know, as soon as I get home, I read about Ben dying in an accident. And I'm like, and immediately I start getting text messages. What's your church going to do to help? And my first thought was, I don't know. He didn't go to our church. Why? You know, okay. They got it. You know, whatever. But then God was like, what did you preach on today? I'm sorry. Um, let, me, let me look back into my notes and see what you, oh, you preached about helping others who may not even do nothing for you. Oh, okay. So I was like, okay, Lord, I get it. We're, we're, we're. So I texted Terry and Lonnie. I was like, you know, you guys have a problem with this? And they're both like, no, I think that would be appropriate. So we decided, you know, and then we're packing the backpacks. And I'm like, you know, we're talking about going back to school, but there are some families right now that going back to school is scaring the snot out of them because they don't have the money to buy all the supplies. And, you, and, I, and I don't, Rachel may agree, be able to back me up. I don't think they're going to ban kids from coming back to school if they don't have every supply on the list because 
groups, we'll get, we've got about 50 extra boxes of crayons. So, I mean, after our backpacks. I don't think our school's going to kick somebody out. But it's nice because I found out it's expensive. I already knew that. But, and we only have one that I'm really buying for. But I'm like, you know, some of these families that are texting me are like, we have five kids, all in the elementary. We've got to buy supplies for all. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm sorry. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. But here's what we can do. And here's, I can put you in contact with people that are helping. And, and you know, we'll do what we can to help. But I look at this and I'm like, Dude, the, the Lord was telling me, going, you're, you're talking about going back to school. Why don't you just act on that? You know, and so, and you guys have been gracious in donating stuff and people have been helping. But I'm like, let's just, let's not talk about it. Let's put some action into the involvement. You with me? Because God's saying, are you, is what you're doing adding up to what pleases me and being, doing what I've told you to do? And so that's the question we ask this morning. Does it add up? May not make sense why, what does it make sense why we're packing, fill up backpacks with glue and pencils and erasers and, and markers and, and we're throwing gators in for that we had left over uh, to give and just in case some of these kids are scared to breathe the air in the building. I'm like, hey, we're going to get rid of them anyway. Might as well give them away. But it's adding up and showing, not only is it, is it, is it showing we care. It's letting people know that we care. Because we're not charging for them. We're just going to go hand them out. Be like, here you go. Drop yourself out. You know, you need a backpack with some supplies. Here you go. We can get everything. But, man, if you only have to pay like 10 bucks, hey, that's better than 100. So we're good. But it says, add all of these things. You will have life. When we add Jesus, it adds life. Father, this morning, Lord, thanks. Lord, thanks that you're allowing us opportunities to add to spiritual assets in our life. Things that will make us better. Would you stand with me this morning? Father, thank you that you're giving us opportunities to, to not just talk about loving people, not just talk about the needs, but being a part of helping resolve some issues and Lord, I know there are 300 plus students in our in our elementary school, and we're only only able to do about 20 backpacks. But Lord, for those 20 families, we're easing a burden of, of gifting them with with supplies that their kids will need. Well, more importantly, it's giving us a a one on one connection with people that we can tell them why we're doing it, and that's because we love you. And that's because we serve a, a, a Savior that, that cares about the smallest of things all the way down to school supplies. Lord, maybe, just maybe, we can reach them if that you love them so much that, God, you sent your only Son to die for us, for our sins, so that we can have eternal life. Maybe today you're asking yourself that, that question of, is what I'm doing adding up to godly obedience? And maybe today there are some things God's pointing out saying this isn't, he's done it with me of this isn't something that's the greatest, let's work on it. And maybe this may be this morning God is pointing the same thing you saying, I don't expect perfection. And you're trying your best, but let's work on some things. Maybe this morning that's what God is speaking to you about. And I pray this morning that you're obedient to that. If you're tuned in on Facebook, I pray you're being obedient to that and hearing that voice this morning. Father, I pray this morning for all my friends that are gathered with us this morning in the sanctuary and those that are tuning in either right now or later on, in, it's later on in the week and they're tuned in to, to listen. God, you would speak to their hearts so they know that you have a plan. You know what you're doing and we just need to trust you. And when we add the godly virtues to our life, you sustain us and keep us. I pray blessing upon every friend this morning, upon every person. I pray you bless them today in every area of their life. And we will always give you glory for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well,
Well, God bless you guys. I hope you have a great afternoon. Don't forget, um, if you want to give something to help the Kirkpatricks, you can in your tithes and offerings. And then if you have school supplies, that would be awesome. Love you guys. We'll see you again next Sunday.